For this TEDx talk, I was supposed to have an outline done by the beginning of January and a first draft done of the talk by mid-January. It's January 21st now and I have neither. I'm like on the verge of tears right now, man. Please welcome Brian White. In late 2018, I was approached to give a TEDx talk at the University of Pennsylvania. I mean, what an honor. So obviously I said yes, but I also decided to film the entire process so that we can give you guys a behind the scenes look on what it's actually like to give a TED talk. I mean, how hard can it be? Morning. Good morning, Nick. It is Monday. I have a call in 15 minutes with the organizers of the TEDx event and the talk is in a little less than two months, and I'm worried that it's not gonna go well because it turns out writing a TED Talk is a lot harder than I originally thought it would be. What I pitched was what makes visual effects bad? When are VFX bad? So here I am pitching a talk about the thing that I have a lot of technical experience with, about how stuff in movies from people far more talented than I am, how what they do sucks. That kind of just goes against my personality. I don't really like talking about how things are bad. Even the poor work that I've done, I'm still proud of to a certain degree because it took effort. <sighs> I don't know, man. I think there's gonna be about like a thousand people in attendance. Mm. Never done that. I got up early this morning too, hoping to just like bang out a script and I ended up just kind of banging out a whole bunch of random ideas that have just been shotgun blasted onto a piece of paper. Oh, oh here we go. Hey, how's it going? Hey Ryan, how are you? Doing all right? I guess the, the main thing that I would want to cover um, today is just go through where you are and, and your progress and just you can let me know what everything's shaping up like right now. Uh, okay, so this is proving to be way more challenging to write than I initially anticipated. I've got tons of ideas, but my challenge right now is kind of focusing those ideas into something that has a cohesive point you'll pull through. We have confidence in you. We watched enough Colorado videos to be confident in that. Um, <laughs> so if you could send me, you know, whatever documents where you have your brainstorming, you know, listed out or whatever, just so that we can get a preview of what we'll be working with, that would be great. Talk to you later. All right, talk to you later. The next step to all this is to actually write, and they're gonna help me with that, but first I need to get all of my ideas for all the different directions this talk can go in onto paper. It's 3.30 a.m. I finished my second draft, came out to five pages. <sighs> this is like my first draft. We have this problem here in the studio where right when we decide to start trying to film something, everyone jumps out of the woodwork and... I gotta get out of this spot. T minus 12 days till the talk. I'm getting off this cross, hold up. The number one fear of people is public speaking. There's a big difference between a camera and a sea of people. If it makes you feel better, there will be cameras there. I'm really nervous about this. I pretty much never talk about it, but I, I get panic attacks every now and then. I, I have anxiety issues. My wife is actually the one who bears the brunt of most of that stuff, because it's usually at home when I'm freaking out at one in the morning that I still haven't gotten a script finished. And so I, I have to like physically tell myself that it will be okay. My, so I, I've literally like made notes. Oh God. I am super humbled and honored that I have this opportunity to do a TED Talk, but I am so looking forward to all of this being done. Dude, Ren, Was you're talking in two days, dude. No, it's in three days. Okay, it's in three it's days. In three days. You excited? Your, your smile is way too evil right now, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent the weekend finalizing my script and I started working on the slideshow. I ended up having to work all night to work on that. Got like three and a half hours of sleep. As of now, my visuals are 100% done. My script is 100% done. But the problem is that I have like two and a half days to memorize five pages of words. I looked at images of the actual auditorium. Dude, I can't wait to see the TED Talk, dude. You're gonna be up on the stage with all the people. It's gonna be awesome, dude, all the lights on there.
plan for memorizing is I'm gonna go to the store and I'm gonna buy a notebook and I'm gonna fill every page of paper with my script, just writing the same paragraph over and over and over again. I found myself being able to remember my script better having written it out by hand and then doing it again and again. I went through the entire script with the presentation with my wife last night. There's a pretty strict 15 minute time limit on your talk. Trying to sync up what you're saying with changing to the next slide is challenging. Okay, so it's the end of the day. We gotta get to the airport. This entire region, I can't feel. Oh no, Red. This, this entire region, I what can't feel. What happened? Oh God. <laughs> This happened like 50 times, you're fucking doing! <laughs> so I was riding along and I was doing something I shouldn't have been doing. I was on my phone. Oh! Because I was going to get my shoes cleaned. And I was like, I need to Google Maps where I'm going. So I pulled it out, I was like, should I take this street or not? And I hit a pothole. So I, I landed on the ground like this with all my force hitting my, my thigh. Two days before your TED talk. At least I didn't break anything. Oh, dude, my hand, oh, my fingers. <sighs> it is Friday, March 15th, and tomorrow is my actual TEDx talk at UPenn. This is gonna be my first attempted rehearsal or without the script. Red Whiteman! Computer generated imagery has allowed for a massive range of new stories to be told through movies and TV. We're heading to the Irvine Auditorium to do the dress rehearsal. For real this time. I'm a little worried because I didn't realize how unprepared with the second half I was. I'm gonna have to warn them ahead of time. Like, I, I have pretty much the entirety of my yeah. script memorized, but I don't have, like, the ordering. Oh. Like, so <laughs> Ren, you are. Honestly, your positivity is all we need. <laughs> At this point. I know everything to say, but I don't know when to say it, and, oh, and I'm really worried about that. Computer-generated imagery, or CGI, has allowed for humans and people have... They, they don't... They don't make us, they, I don't just understand that. Dude, the rehearsal we had in the hotel room went so much better. Every single paragraph I said, I choked after it. That's a terrible feeling. Because I, I feel like I already know the content of what I'm trying to say well enough. My problem is that I don't know what to say next. And I freeze, and I choke, and when I choke, I get even more nervous, and I realize that I'm messing up. And it's just a disaster. I, I, I gotta work harder. So no, I, I, gotta, I, gotta work, I gotta work smarter. And also harder. So apparently I can actually use notes on each of my slides from my presentations. I went ahead and I just tried to write basically just like memory cues. I think I might have been saved. I ended up kind of delivering these a little late, uh, but what's new in my life? So what I want to do now is I want to just do a run through where I pretend to click through the slides, but the only notes I'm going to have are basically just this. And introducing Ren Weichman from Corridor Digital. <laughs> All right, we're rolling. Computer generated imagery, or CGI, has allowed for a massive range of new stories to be told through movies and TV shows. Black holes, dragons, superheroes, oh my. Like all forms of art, quality comes down to skill and time. No film is ever finished, it just gets released. They pour blood, sweat, and tears into these stories that capture our imaginations. Thank you. We're at 1544. Ah! Oh, dang it! Dang it! Dang it! Dang it! Dang it! I think you should just practice the <clears> thing again. Just do it all one more time? I, I feel bad for you, Nick, that you're having time. to listen to this At over and over again. Time. Oh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm going to have to do it many times, but I think you're right. I'm going to actually stand outside the stadium and deliver. <laughs> deliver my TED I'm Talk? Scalp because your TED <laughs> talk. 
I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. I'm not ready. Oh god, I'm not ready. Like, get pumped up, get excited, uh, get ready. It's gonna be really, really great. There's nothing more I can do to prepare right now to make it better. So at this point, why worry about that? So I'm, I'm I, that's, I feel like resigned to whatever's gonna happen, mm -hmm. and that's calming. Thank you so much for helping me through this, man. Yeah, dude. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. There's a common misconception regarding how CGI is created. People tend to think effects are just made by computers rather than actual people. But here's the thing, great visual effects are about more than just technical ability. They need to have artistic expression as well. I'm hesitant to openly criticize the effects of a movie because a lot of overworked artists help create them, and I think about those artists a lot. Take a moment to appreciate all of the hard work that went unnoticed. Visual effects artists are artists after all. They put blood, sweat, and tears into these stories that capture our imaginations, and sometimes their best work may have been invisible all along. First line, I licked my lips and realized I have no moisture in my mouth. Dude, that was amazing. Thank Spectacular. You. Thank so you. Good. I'm like on the verge of tears right now, man. Like completing it, like having having like the audience laugh at all the right moments, to not mess up or choke at any point. <sighs> okay, now I actually am tearing up, so my emotions are just like clipping their values right now, so I'm just kinda I gotta like handle that. I expected to feel complete and utter relief, but that's not even remotely Wait, what? what I feel right now. I feel pure ecstaticment and excitement and energy. So many people! So many people came here. We thought there was gonna be 10 people. <laughs> I heard you call Minecraft earlier. <laughs> I'm never safe. I know the places that go wear and tear and the places that do not. Oh, that's smart, okay. That was one of the most challenging but most rewarding experiences of my entire life. So a huge thanks to the TEDx Penn organization for having me and Nick on, documenting the entire thing. It was a really, really cool experience. And the talk itself, We'll be up at some point, I don't know when, but in the meantime, we actually realized the content of my talk makes for a great video essay. So we went ahead and made one, and it's already up online right now. You can go check it out. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for sticking along through this whole journey. Until next time, thanks for watching.